All right, I finally got my Bose Solo TV sound system. I just picked this up off eBay for about $30. I bought it because the complaint was it will not power on. So we'll test that right now. I have the remote that came with it. A little used, but uh, should be functional. I checked it does have the battery in there. So I'm gonna press the power button. There's an LED indicator right here, right below the Bose uh, insignia there that should turn green when it's in standby mode so I'm gonna try it nothing there nothing there nope nothing so first thing to do let's see if it's working nope this camera doesn't pick it up let's see if this will work alright I'm now using the front facing camera and Let's see if it picks it up. Oh yeah. So the remote is working. It's at least emitting an IR pulse. So should be working. So we get to open this up. So I'll flip it back around to the front facing camera and we'll open it up. All right, I have all the screws off of the cover. And so we can open this thing up, see what it looks like. Pulls up from the side there pretty easily. All right. all right there isn't it so I have the unit upside down on its back or on its top I should say and I have it flipped around so that the back end is here and the front end is here so our power is coming in right here on the left looks like it goes through some filtering here a capacitor to EMI filter a few more inductors and so that would probably make this the power supply so let's see if I can see a fuse there is a fuse right here. That's a fuse. Fuse 1301. And I won't be able to test that unless I remove the board. So I'm not going to test that right now. I'm going to take a peek inside. I assume this is the power supply. I'll take the, uh, the cover off this and see what I can find. And those are Torx head screws. So I will be back with a Torx head driver. All right, I found my Torx head driver. I like saying that, Torx, Torx. So I'll take all these out. And I'm not gonna make you watch me do this, so I'll just be back when I have the screws out. All right, screws are out. Let's pull the cover off this power supply. All right. Pretty simple. So we have power coming in here, and we'll look for a fuse. There's a small fuse right here. It's red fuse. It's going to go through some filtering, the CMI filter, these inductors, and it's tough to see all the traces. But I can see that it looks like it comes through these inductors and then over to these inductors and capacitors. And up through this way, that makes sense, I guess. We've got more capacitors, another EMI filter, and here's your bridge rectifier. With another filter, more filtering. <clears throat> and then this is either a diode or a trans... Okay, it's a diode. D1301 diode. Your transistor, some filtering capacitors. These are your transistors. These are your two power transistors driving the supply. You have a couple of ICs over here. One of them might be the drive IC, I'm not sure. One of them's probably an opto coupler. And you have more filtering here, this big filter capacitor before it's looks like it's sent out. It should be sent out this way to the rest of the board. So, what we want to do is check for voltages. So the thing won't turn on, perhaps the incoming fuse is, is blown. Or perhaps something in the power supply is bad. Since everything is surface mount, um, except for, well, some things are surface mount. You have several capacitors that are through hole. I'm sure the uh, transformer's through hole. The bridge rectifier is through hole, um, but it's going to be easier to test if I pull the board out. So it looks like we have three connectors here, 
and a few screws, one, two, there's probably a few more, three, three screws, and the board should come out. So I'm gonna pull the board out, and when it's out, I'll be back. Got the board out, and I'm ready to test. So there are many ways you can go about troubleshooting a power supply. All we're trying to do is verify that uh, we don't have any issues with this power supply. So you could start at the fuse, you can ohm out the fuse, make sure there's continuity. You can power it up and, and follow the trace all the way through the supply. You can start at the output, or what you think is the output. Since I don't have a schematic for this, Bose does not offer schematics. It's not the easiest thing to troubleshoot without schematic. Um, when I don't have a schematic, I test voltages at uh, familiar components. So you can test at the fuse, you know that the incoming fuse should have power. What I like to do is usually start at the bridge rectifier. And why I like to do that is because if you have power coming into the rectifier and you have power coming out, so you should have 120 volts AC coming in and 160 to 170 volts DC coming out, you rule out, you effectively rule out half of the circuit. So if I have AC coming in, I pretty much rule out this part of the circuit. Excuse me, this part of the circuit. So this incoming filtering, the fuse, the incoming filtering, filter caps, EMI filter, all the way to the bridge rectifier, I, I kind of rule this out as being bad. <clears throat> and then if I have output from the rectifier, I can kind of move forward and then I can, I can decide what I want to check after that. So I'm going to start at the bridge rectifier. So I'm going to flip it over before I plug it in. And so bridge rectifier has the common four pins and they're going to be right here on the bottom. Slide this over so I can put my meter in place. These four pins right here, one, two, three, four. There's my meter. I'm going to put it on AC to start because we should have AC voltage in the two center pins and then DC on the output on the two outer pins. So I'm going to plug it in. And give me a moment here. spot bump the camera okay all right so I'm not plugged into the wall yet so I'm gonna plug in now and hopefully nothing goes pop right I mean we've already powered this thing up uh, we've had it plugged in without any issues so all I did was remove the board so let's plug it in here we go all right it's plugged in so again I'm gonna start checking for AC voltage at the input of the bridge rectifier. The input are going to be the two center pins. So I should have 120, approximately 120 volts at the input. And here we go. 120 volts AC. Very good. So again, we basically just ruled out uh, almost half of the power supply as being bad. You could have a marginal capacitor but um, getting 120 volts AC to the rectifier is what we need to have, so that's good. So let's check the output and make sure the rectifier is rectifying properly. So for that we need to be on DC and in the 200 volt range in my case, in my meter's case. We should have between 160 and 170 volts DC. And it's got negative there because I'm on the wrong pin. Obviously the positive pin is on the left. So again, your output should be the two outer pins of the rectifier, 167 volts DC. Very good. So we have voltage coming to the bridge rectifier, and we have output from the bridge rectifier. So after that, we should be going uh, pretty much to the uh, to those two transistors, the power transistors on front, and to the transformer, and from the transformer to some sort of output rectification, probably that the diode on the front. And now that I see this IC here, this is probably the drive IC. I can look up the schematic later, but I'm going to guess that that's actually a drive IC. So I'm going to go on the front now, and we'll check some voltages. Um, but again, we pretty much ruled out the front half of the power supply. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to unplug it and flip it over. <clears throat> and if you're working on something like this, even when you unplug it, you do have potentially hazardous voltage present the large filter capacitor we saw in the beginning it's got two leads somewhere where's that going to be over here could easily have 
100 or 200 volts on there. I worked on power supplies that have voltage remaining on those filter capacitors long after you unplug them. It's not always the case, but I would always assume that there's dangerous voltage present. So be very careful, even after you unplug it, either check your large capacitors like this one, check the, across those leads, make sure you don't have hazardous DC voltage, and if you do, I would um, bridge those pins with a, with a large resistor, bleed that capacitor out so it's uh, no longer hazardous. Um, so here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm going to plug back in, and I'm going to look for some voltages, some more voltages here. So again, kind of flipped over here on the other side. We ruled out the fuse is being bad. It's obviously good. All this filtration, nothing's going too haywire and through there. Looks like it's coming up through here and to the bridge rectifier. So we know we're good all the way up to the rectifier. And so after the rectifier, you get a little bit more filtering. And then you're going to have these two transistors that are going to be driving through the transformer. And I'm going to guess, it, yeah, it should be through this diode. So we should have incoming voltage and an outcoming volta uh, output voltage from this diode. So that's probably the easiest place to check next. So I'm going to plug it in. We'll check for voltage at the diode, and then we can move on. So plugging in now. Okay. <clears throat> and... I'll put my meter on the other side. Sorry for any glare. I'm not a professional cameraman with professional lighting, so it's kind of it's what I have. So this diode input is going to be high frequency. Uh, voltage. So it's probably going to be high frequency in the kilohertz range of DC voltage. So my meter is probably not going to pick it up and I don't have the scope out right now but we can give it a shot. I don't I don't think it's going to pick anything up. So we can check probably a ground here. Nope, not really picking anything up there. Nope, but we can check the output. We should have an output, a DC output, if everything's working properly. That'll tell us if our drive IC is, is outputting, and that'll tell us if our output, our drive transistors here are functioning properly, and, and if our transformer is functioning properly. So let's take a look at this diode output. It looks like this is ground here, and we'll check it here again. I'm on DC volts, and 200 It's probably not going to be necessary, but we'll, we'll start at 200 and we'll see. 200 volt range. Nothing there. Let's try. There it is. So from this leg to your output, 24 volts seems very reasonable. And I'm trying to see the part number on this diode without getting my head in the shot. hard for me to see but we are getting 24 volts DC output that's good so that rules out most of the power supply now as, as being bad so that means again our drive IC on that back is outputting the high frequency pulse to these two transistors these two transistors are driving through the transformer transformer is stepping down the voltage to 24 volts and the rectifier is rectifying the high frequency voltage to a pulse DC voltage of 24 volts. So we can check a few other things. Um, I can see that the leads here, uh, the output is coming not only to these, these small transfer holes here but also to these uh, filter capacitors. So we can check some of these filter capacitors and make sure that they're uh, at least not dropping the voltage. So we check the incoming one, we can check the last one in line here. Still at 24. So these filter capacitors, hopefully you saw that. Show you again. 
I'm on the last output capacitor here, I'm trying to get a good measurement. There we go, 24. So our power's coming in just fine, getting rectified by the bridge rectifier, being driven by the drive IC on the back through these two transistors, through the transformer. Transformer's dropping the voltage down to 24 volts. This diode is rectifying it to pulse DC and outputting it to these uh, six filter capacitors. After that, I would need to do a lot more signal tracing, but it certainly seems like our power supply is okay. So at this point, what I would do is try and move on to check something else. So I think what I'm going to want to check next is the infrared receiver. This, um, this Bose sound dock, or this solo TV sound system, it, the only, it doesn't have any buttons on the outside. The only, the only way it knows how to turn on is from my remote command to the infrared receiver. And so I'm going to check voltages going to that receiver. There's only three connectors on this board. And I'm going to carefully slide this over. I know that, or I can guess, that these two are going to be to the speakers. Because we have two sets of speakers, one on either side. And then you have this um, center ribbon cable. And this, I saw from earlier, this ribbon cable leads to the front of the machine. So I'm going to guess that we should have, we should have voltage on here going to the infrared receiver. Um, so I'm going to check for that now. This looks to be like an 8 or 10 pin connector. And so, should be on ground, so I can ground out my lead carefully, the top of this uh, block here. Of course, I'm going to have to uh, get the meter in the shot if I can. I have to bring it over here. And we'll see if there's any voltage on that output cable. Um, the connector at least. Got to rearrange a little bit. All right, here we go. Again, I'm going to do that, do it carefully. I'm just doing that so I can probe with one hand easily. Should be ground. So one of these pins should have some amount of voltage on here. 24 volts out of the output here seems too high. I'm going to guess it's going to be lower. It should be something like 5 or 3.3 or something like that. So. I'm going to check pins until I find something. And really, I can, I can probe through the top of the connectors. I'm going to do that. So there's, I'm going to call this pin 1. It's hard to tell which pin I'm on. So nothing on pin 1. Hey, look at that. Pin 2, 3.2 volts. Perfect. So that may be going to our infrared receiver. Might as well check the others. Pin 3, 3.2 volts. Pin 4, nothing. Pin 5, nothing. Pin 6, nothing. Pin 7, 6 volts. Interesting. Not sure what that is for. Pin 8, pin 9. Okay, so we have three pins with voltages on them. Pin 2 has 3.2 volts. And I'm calling it pin 2. I can't see the pin out, but pin, calling pin 1 the pin on the right and and however many pins here is on the left. So pin 1 has nothing. Pin 2 is 3.2 volts. Pin 3 is 3.2 volts. And then was it pin 5? Pin 7 has 6 volts. So we have voltage. That seems like a correct voltage. Um, so now what we want to do is reinstall this board and see if we can take that front end off and measure voltages at the infrared receiver. Because if we're getting voltage at the receiver, we should be able to detect if it's sensing the remote command. So I'm going to hook this all back up, and uh, I'll be back. Hopefully I can get that front cover off too, and we'll take a look at that IR receiver. I'll be back. I was able to pull the front faceplate off. You got it off? There were three screws here, three screws here, so six screws in total. And this thing just came, I mean, you just kind of wedge it out from one end and wedge it out from another, and it came right out. And so you can see two sets of speakers, two on either side. 
And then right here in front is our little infrared receiver board with the ribbon cable coming from that front main board. I'll zoom in there if I can. That helps a little bit. So there's not much to this and you know there doesn't need to be but again so you have the ribbon cable you have the infrared receiver here and that's going to be our indicator LED so one thing I'm going to do really quick is just to make sure this indicator LED is functioning so I have no power applied to the unit all you do to test put your meter in the diode checker mode and you don't need to even look at the meter. Put your leads across the LED and if it's functioning, especially small like this, it should light up. Now I don't know the polarity, so it's not that. It's going to be this way if anything. So Again, I have it in the diode mode. There we go. Green light and red light. Green, red, go. Stop. Go. Cool. So the LED is functioning. So it's not like we're getting voltage, but the LED is just not illuminating. No, the LED is just not getting the voltage for some other reason. So LED should work. So now what I'm going to do is plug it in and make sure I have voltage at one of these pins. Actually, we have three different pins with voltage, right? So I'm going to try and identify which pins over here have the voltage, and then I'm going to watch um, the voltage on each pin while I press the power button on the remote, and we'll see if we find see if we find anything. We should see something move. It should, I believe, it should it should spike up or decrease. One of those two. So um, I'm going to plug it in, and we'll check for voltage on those pins. Okay, we're plugged in. Now the way the, the way this thing is situated, you're not going to be able to see the meter, so you're going to have to take my word for it. I see four pins on the front here, and there's four on the back. I really hope it's one of these pins. Oh, first try. Okay, so this far pin on the right has 3.2 volts. And the one next to it has nothing. And, and this one has 4.3 volts. I don't remember having 4.3, so that's interesting. Anyway, two of these front pins have voltage. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to try one of these pins. I'll try the far right one. I'm going to have to find the uh, remote. Here it is. And I'm going to press the remote and see what we get. And it does drop. So I'll position the camera in a better uh, position so you can see the meter and I'll be back. So I decided to skip one step and just show you the voltage coming into the board from the ribbon cable right here. So I have the unit powered up. I have my meter in DC volt range. Put the probe on the 3.2 pin and I'm going to um, Press the power button while aiming at the infrared receiver and watch the voltage as I press it. So pressing now. You can see a drop. And if I press and hold, you'll see a drop from 3.23 to approximately 2.4. So about 9 tenths of a volt, which is significant. So the signal from the remote is getting 
all the way back to this main board. I did quite a bit of signal tracing as well and I'll show you what I found in a minute. So I'm going to take this cover off here and inside here is the processing unit. So I'm going to power the unit down quick. <clears throat> take this cover off. And the first time it was pretty difficult to get off. And this time was, that was a lot easier. So it took a lot of signal tracing to identify the um, the path from this pin, that 3.23 pin we were just looking at, to where it uh, comes in on the main processor. So this is the main processor chip here. And unfortunately, so it is a Texas Instrument um, IC, but if you look it up, it says um, Texas Instruments does not provide the data sheet for this processor. I'm guessing because it's a Bose special, so this thing is made just for Bose. Bose is, uh, you know, it's got proprietary information for Bose, and so they don't, they're not allowed to release that information. So that makes it very, very difficult to troubleshoot anything inside this processing unit. But nevertheless, I was successful in identifying the pin. Again, after much um, tracing, and it's pin six. So pin one is denoted by the dot here and then it's six pins out from here so I <clears throat> can try and zoom in a little bit better actually I don't want to zoom in I want you to see the meter so I'm gonna forgive me my head's probably gonna be in the way I wanna make sure I'm on the right pin here oh, it would help if I plugged it back in plugging it back in now all right. Now, <clears throat> so there we go. So that's pin six, and you can see it's 3.22 volts. That's the pin going into the processing unit. And nope, oh, it's the one right next to it. That one. There we go. 3.23 volts going into the unit. Press the power button on the remote, and the voltage drops. Let it go, and it climbs back up. Press and release, press and release, voltage drops, and then regains. So what that means is our signal is getting from the infrared receiver to this main board and to the processor. So what the processor should be doing now is, is turning on. It, it should enable an output from one of these many, many pins to tell the unit to turn on we should have a, I believe after 10 seconds after powering on or after turning it on, you should hear an audible beep, and then we should have a green LED on the front there. And we have none of that. So there's something probably wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, in this processing unit. I really, really hope it's not the processor I see itself, because I'm not sure if I can get one of those, and even if I can, it's going to be very, very difficult to replace one. I've never replaced a 100-pin surface mount IC. Uh, to do that successfully would be very, very difficult. I don't have a, a proper um, rework station to complete that. So I'd much rather it be something else, one of these filter, one of these uh, surface mount capacitors, one or both of these um, crystals here. It's still possible that we have a problem in the power supply. Again, since I don't have a schematic, I'm not exactly sure of the the uh, turn on theory, but I know the processor is getting the signal. It should output a signal somewhere, perhaps to this power supply to turn on. We know that the power supply is functioning in, in general. It's outputting voltages. Whether or not it's getting a signal from the processor and not turning on, or this thing is just not outputting a signal in the first place, or there's something else on this board causing an issue, um, I'm not sure. So there's one thing that I did notice, and you're not, you probably are not going to pick this up but I can hear an audible whining coming from this area of the board. And so I'll stick my head in there and make sure it's still there. Yes. So I'm going to put the camera really close to the board to see if you can hear it. Stable for a minute. You won't see much, but I'm going to put it next to the board. 
There's a good shot of the IC, by the way. Let's see if I can get a good... There's the part number. I'm just moving it around to, to try and get the best um, positioning to be able to hear that whining. Hopefully you can hear it. And so whether or not you can hear it, there is a... There is a very noticeable uh, whining sound from this area of the board. And the, I was poking around a little bit, trying to determine if it might be a capacitor. When I touched these, when I touched this crystal specifically, I can hear the pitch of the whining change. I don't think it's it's going away completely, but it changes. It doesn't do that when I touch anything else on the board. None of these capacitors do anything. Touching this crystal doesn't do anything, but touching this crystal, just touching either of the leads, I can hear that whining change its pitch. So since, as I said, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to get that processing circuit, that processing IC, um, and even if I were to get it, it would be very difficult, if not impossible, for me to change that effectively. I'm going to order and replace both of the crystals. All right. So I'm going to change this one. This is a 26.000 megahertz, and this is a 24.576 megahertz crystal. Even though this is the only one that seems to be affecting the pitch of the, that noise, I'm going to change both of them. They're cheap, they're easy to change, and um, it's not going to be much lost if, if it doesn't fix it. Um, I'm really hoping that that does it. Again, without a schematic and without a pinout for this IC, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to identify what could be the problem. So if these don't fix it, I, I may have a few more items to look at, but um, you know, it might just be an entire board replacement, which you know, I'm, I'm not sure if that would even be cost effective, if that would be worth it, or if it's even available. So, so I'm going to order those parts, those two, um, two crystals and when I get them in I'll make a part two for this video so stick around for that I'll install both of those crystals on the video we'll attempt to power it up we'll see um, you know we'll see what comes of that and then uh, if it does happen to power up I will hook up a uh, you know a DVD player or something to this and we'll test the audio and see how it runs that would be fantastic so stick around for part two. We'll install those uh, those crystals, and we'll I just hope it fixes it. So we'll see you next time.